Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Bearded Dev. In this video, it's going to be another SQL tutorial and we're going to be looking at window functions. Don't forget guys, if you do like the video, please do hit that thumbs up button and check out the other videos on my channel uh, for any tutorials on SQL development, data analysis or business intelligence. So what we're going to be looking at today is window functions. They were first introduced in 2005, I believe, and further support was added in 2012, and hopefully uh, Microsoft continue to invest in this area. So what are window functions? They are used to perform data analysis calculations. Uh, they address an important need compared to the group by clause, which we will be going through as part of the demonstration today. Um, so we're going to be looking at the over clause, which determines the windows, uh, so the sets of rows. And then we have partition by as well, which splits the result set into partitions on which that function is applied. So we're going to jump over to SQL Server Management Studio now and go through some examples uh, of how we can work with window functions and the benefits as well. Just to mention the functions available uh, with window functions, so we've got aggregate, uh, which are your basic count sum, average, min and max, I'm sure if you work with group by or um, work with SQL before you've come across those. Offset, which we're not going to be going into in this video, um, we're going to be going into that in a lot more detail in further videos, and um, there are also statistical functions as well that we can use, um, and we can also break our data into frames, which again we will be looking at in a further video. Okay, so we've come across to SQL Server Management Studio now, and we're going to be using a, a sales details table uh, for this example, so I'll just run a query against that now. So in this table, we've got a sales details ID, uh, which is the primary key for this table, a unique identifier. Uh, we've got a sales ID, um, so this table relates back to our sales table. We've got a sales date, uh, we've got our item ID, uh, we've got the price, the quantity ordered, and the line total, which is a combination of the price multiplied by the quantity ordered. So we can see in here we've got different sales IDs. So typically what we'd do if we wanted to get a total uh, per sale, uh, we'd use a group by clause. So we'll go ahead and do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at our, our sales ID. And then what we're going to do is we want to say the sum of line total. And then we're going to say from our sales details table. And we're going to group by our sales ID. So if you haven't come across the group by clause before, go and have a look at my channel. There is a video on there. There is a tutorial on grouping. So let's just execute this query now. Uh, I haven't given that an alias. Uh, I'll just quickly throw that in there as, as total. And um, we'll execute that query again. So we can see we've got 15 sales IDs there and we've got the total. But as part of the query, let's say what a user has asked us to do or what we are required to do is we want to return the, the sales details as well as the total amount. So normally what I do in this case is just drop the initial group by clause into a CTE. And if you haven't seen CTEs, again, there is another tutorial on my channel. And then I just simply select all from CTE. I'll give it an alias because it's got the same ID in there. And we join that back to our sales details table. Uh, we'll give that an alias as B just for speed. And we'll say on our sales ID equals our sales ID. So if we just highlight all of that and run that query, we can see there we've got our total amount it's not presented the best at the moment so we've got our total amount per sale and then we've got our individual sales details as well so we can see looking at sales id one this is made up of two lines of sales details uh, item 52 and 6456 um, we've got our line totals there 1995 and 62 pound 91 
If we add them together, we get our total of £82.86. But as you can see with this query, it's not the easiest to read or debug, and we could make it a lot more complex depending on the sort of data we wanted to return. So what we're going to have a look at is window functions. So I'm just going to remove this initially and we're going to go back to a select all from this table. So let's say for example we want to return as we did before all of the data available in here. We won't bother with sales details ID. That's just a primary key for this table. It's not relevant to what we want to return. So I'm just going to write out a query here, uh, just removing the data we want to return. So uh, hypothetical situation, let's say a user has asked us for this information. They want to return all the data, but they also want a total amount uh, per sale. So this is the data we're going to work with, and now we want to return uh, as, as some of the line amounts um, against our sales uh, our sale ID. So we can see earlier we've shown a quick example of using a group by clause and joining back to the table, but that means we've got to run it against the table twice. So let's have a look at a window function. So we're going to be working with just simple aggregate functions in this video. So what we're going to say is sum line total as we would normally. And then we're going to introduce the over clause here. So over clause is a major part of window functions. So that enables us to divide the data into windows. So we're going to open a bracket and then we're going to partition the data by the sales ID. So partition further divides the data down. So similar to your groupings, uh, a partition, as we know, divides the data into individual partitions. So each sales ID is going to represent a, a an individual partition. So to do that, we write partition by sales ID. And we're going to give this, uh, we'll call this sales underscore total. So if I execute that query now, as we can see at the end, we've got a new column called sales total, which as before was similar to when we worked with the group by clause. So we've got a sales total amount per sales ID. And we haven't had to write a CTE to group the data and then join back to the table again to return the results. We are going to look at the differences in terms of performance in looking at a group by within a CTE and then joining back to itself and creating a window function in further videos down the line. So we'll go through another example here. So let's say we want to add the, the, the count. We want to know how many different sales lines uh, we have got per sale. So again, we can just simply use count. Uh, line total and again we use the over clause and then we partition by again we're going to be using the sales ID we're going to be looking at individual sales as uh, we'll just say line count and if we execute that query now we can see we've got the relevant results there if we look at sales ID 1 there are two lines we're showing that here and we've got a sales total again as we went through previously now let's say in addition to this we also want to look at a a total so we want to look at the total amount in this table again we could use a group uh, we could simply run a query against the table to get a total and join back to it but in this case what we're going to simply do we're going to do some line uh, total and we're going to use the over clause, but we're not going to create any partitions. So we're just going to open and close brackets there. And we're just going to call this total. So if we don't have the partition by clause there, it's going to operate on the whole set of data. So because we haven't partitioned it, we haven't separated the data into separate sales IDs that we have done previously. It's just going to look at the data as a whole. So if we execute this query now, we would expect, as we can see, 
that column to show the same data for each individual row so it's exactly the same because it's a sum of all the data within that table now what if we wanted to add to this table as well we wanted to add a daily sales amount so again we could use a window function here so again we're going to be summing our line total column and in this case we're going to use always use over clause and we're going to be partitioning by the sales date so I'll just add that in here and we'll call this daily total so if I execute that query now we can see we've got our sales total which is against the individual sales we've got our daily total which is against the individual day as we can see here I'll just highlight these so for the first of the first 2017 our daily total was £1,018.29 and then we've got our entire total for the entire data within this table now it's also worth noting when working with window functions they only apply to the select stage so if you are not familiar with the steps of logical query processing there is another video on my channel so I do suggest you go that and check that out so we have the from where group by having then our select stage which is where window functions are applied now the stage after uh, the select statement is order by so we could also order by a window function uh, we're not going to do that in this example um, in fact we will we'll just order by our sales uh, total now so we've given that an alias and we can because we haven't given that an alias within the select the order by clause is aware at that stage that we have given that an alias really hope you have enjoyed that introductory video to window functions they do pack a powerful capability within SQL Server uh, uh, we need to cover that in a lot more detail in further videos down the line so stay tuned to the channel they will be coming soon as mentioned previously do check out my other videos on the channel i've got tutorials on sql development data analysis and business business intelligence so if you've got an interest in any of those areas subscribe to the channel click that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded thanks a lot for watching